Charlie Platt. Bienvenidos to the Sultans of Sales podcast, special edition. First time with three people on the show. I'm your host, Jamil. And what we wanted to do today is celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and Mexican Independence Day, which is this week. And to do that, we're going to do this podcast episode primarily in Espanol. Now, me gusta la gente, la cultura, la comida. Uh, me gusta bailar, me gusta football. Pero yo necesito practicar español. So I called two of my good friends who are fluent in Spanish and speak the language very, very well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask a question. We'll have some translations and then answers will be in Spanish. And <laughs> this is uh, groundbreaking. We're going to try this thing out and see how it goes. On the show, making a repeat appearance is Tobias Hernandez. I'm still unequivocally biased for Tobias. He's a good friend of mine and uh, co-worker. And Nicholas Nicky Gannon, great friend of no Nick. A long, long time. We went to high school together. We played soccer together. And Nikki's on the show joining us from Dallas. Thank you guys for joining the show. Welcome. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Nas. Thanks for hitting Nicholas, Nick, and Nikki all at once. <laughs> you bet, brother. Thanks for being here. So let's dig in. I'm going to ask a question. And maybe maybe I'll start uh with with toby i'll ask i'll ask the question nick you can translate it to toby i don't know however you guys want to do this yeah, let's do that it. for so, our audience you know for the audience whoever it may be so what is mexican independence day and and why do we why do we why do we celebrate it um el día Señor, toby, oh, deja, déjame hacer la pregunta por favor oh, el perdón, es, perdón. quiero un trabajo uh ¿Qué significa? ¿De qué se trata la independencia de México, señor Toby? En tu experiencia, tu opinión, por favor. Es como los, cualquier otro país que fue colonizado por partes de España, Inglaterra, los países viejos donde viene la mayoría de nuestros, nuestro linaje Y para nosotros es la independencia de España. Uh, muchos conocen toda la historia de Hernán Cortés en los tiempos de uh, 1400 y pico de, contra los indios y llegaron, colonizaron uh, a México y, y a partes de Centro y uh, Latinoamérica. Así de que para nosotros es tener nuestra cultura indígena, no solo española. Así de que traer la cultura de los indígenas, de la, de la gente que era común y típica del Estado, um, y más para la gente celebrar el tipo de, de pasión que tenemos. Déjame intentar de no, compartir esto con todos. I mean, it's a big, it's a big question, right? It's tough, tough, yes. tough to sum up. But, you know, it's the, the times of independence from the, the, old, the old countries of Europe have colonized the Americas. England, Spain, whatnot. This is Mexico. It was colonized by Spain. But you know, the main thing that I want to touch on that Toby said was, you know, it's it's not just the culture of the Spaniards in Europe, but it's also the Native Americans, the 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 Indians here, the Ameri uh, los Indios, right? You've got your Aztecs, your Incas, your Mayans, all of that. So it's trying to celebrate, make an effort to show that the mix. If I if I if I understood you correctly, of those two cultures. Not that Toby needs to translate. I'm going to translate for Toby, even though he's fluent in English. <laughs> Man, I'm translating for me, brother. Uh, okay. Uh, perfecto. Uh, thank you for that. And, you know, for me, I think for all of us, you know, Nikki, we, we played soccer together. Toby played soccer as well in Chicago growing up. Soccer is such a, and football is such a big, big part of, the Latin American culture, the Hispanic culture. Can you guys talk about that? Just, just maybe what you've maybe growing up or, or, uh, yeah, I still, I just, just the other day was, uh, you know, kicking the ball around and, and, and just, you can make, you can make friends. You don't have to speak the language, but you know, soccer is the, the universal language. So just wanted to have a discussion about, about the beautiful game. I'll, I'll jump in on this one. Toby, if you want to translate this, 
back into English for Nas, feel free. I don't know. <laughs> we don't have the what the protocol is. We'll mix it up. Pero no sé si ustedes pueden ver. No soy no soy un hispano hablante nativo. Yo aprendí la eh, el idioma en la escuela, la universidad y viajar. Pero uh, mi, mi primera experiencia con español, con la, no sé, la oportunidad de usarlo y recognizar el beneficio fue en, uh, durante la el Copa de Dallas. Es un torneo aquí en Dallas donde hay gente por todo el mundo viene a Dallas. Uh, los equipos quedan en los, las casas de los equipos de Dallas. Entonces yo tenía la oportunidad de usar mi español y fue bien importante ser capaz de hablar español y todos los jugadores de los otros equipos dicen, ah, mira, habla con Nicolás. Este, este puede hablar en español. Entonces de una manera instante yo tenía un equipo de amigos. Entonces, y es, esto es fenomenal. Entonces por ser como soy, mi apariencia, nadie está pensando que yo hablo español. Entonces, cuando yo llegué, todos miran así y de repente hablo español y pues a brazos abiertos. Entonces, eso es mi experiencia, pero fue por el, uh, el vehículo de fútbol, como dijo el señor, señor Jamil. I actually understood quite a bit of that because I think I know where you were going. But uh, Toby, you, you, want give, you want to give me the, the yeah kind of the highlights? Yeah, he he played in the Dallas Cup, and there's tons of people that come from all over the U.S., all over the world. They they descend on Dallas. Um, they get to stay in houses locally with some of the Dallas team members or other friends, and that was um, that was the vehicle of how he got into soccer. And I mean, I I mean, I'm coming from Chicago. I've heard of the Dallas Cup. I had a lot of my friends that travel to Dallas and play. I never went down to the Dallas Cup. I ended up doing like the Gold Cup or something. I think we played in Memphis and Kansas City or something. But we never actually, I never made it to Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I remember we had uh, two, uh, you know, I was a senior, junior, senior high school. And we had a couple, couple of kids from Czech Republic at the time. It was, it was, fa it was fascinating. Just we hosted because each, each Dallas team would host a team from a different country. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it was really, really That's neat. On stories that cultural exchange that it facilitates is phenomenal see see it is it's you don't realize how much soccer is around the world like me being mexican that's all we saw i mean even to this day like go to mexico like there's basketball teams there's there's nfl in mexico whatever their version but it doesn't come anywhere near how the stadiums feel up when it comes to soccer i mean it is definitely a way of life Uh, so Toby, talk about that for you. I mean, you, you, you played, uh, professionally for the Chicago fire, which I think is pretty, pretty awesome. And you can see, I was going to say, you didn't make now. it to Dallas cub, but you did make it to the MLS. Yeah. So yeah. I think it worked out. No, 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 no me tocó jugar con el equipo mayor. Um, me tocó entrenar mucho con ellos. Me tocó jugar con a unos uh, participantes muy buenos como Beasley, Zach Thornton, Chris Armas, eran unos de los mejores jugadores del Fire en ese tiempo. Eran en el 1999, así de que era hace cuántos años, ya son más de 20 años que estábamos allá. Uh, pero para nosotros era jugar, era práctica, no era práctica, era irnos a divertirnos con los amigos, entrenar, para nosotros era jugar. A mí, mientras que me darías un balón, estaba feliz. No me molestaba correr, no me molestaba el calor, el frío. Um, indoor, outdoor, para mí era, era lo mismo. Pero entre más juegas y más viejo te haces, más, más me duelen las rodillas. Así de que lo tuve que dejar. So, quick, quick translation. I mean, big time, big time soccer over there for Toby. He played with some studs, if you recognize the names. Oh, yeah. Easily, Max Thornton, Armas. And these guys played in multiple World Cups big games and mm -hmm. uh I, what i liked more than any of that was just practicing soccer wasn't practicing soccer it was playing right nos practicar es jugar so give me a ball all mm -hmm. i will run for days i don't care how hot it is i don't care uh how brutal yeah. how difficult the training is it's fun it's playing and um but like like all of us the knees we've all gotten older and so 
Yeah. Like the knees, the knees were his uh, demise. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you guys know this. We've probably talked about this so many times individually, but you can be in shape and you can be in soccer shape. There's a big, big difference. Um, that earlier but, today. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the thing, though, that I love is I've played this sport on, I think, four continents. You know, Africa. Like, it's just, just, it's so easy. You just, you pick up a ball. You don't even need shoes. Many kids play without them, right? In some of these underdeveloped countries. And it's just such a, wow, it's just such a wonderful sport. It's given me so much. So it's just fun to, to, to know two of my good friends. And there's some other good friends as well that, that, that play and still play. And uh, it's spectacular. So thank you for those, those stories. Nicolas. Yeah, uh, uh, talk to us about your recent transition because you were teaching, right, at an English second language school, and now are in Spanish, or, yeah, in Spanish, yeah. So just uh, maybe maybe a piece on that for for the audience who maybe doesn't know the, the greatness the greatness of you. Wow, thank you. Pues la la pregunta de Señor Jamil es de mi transición de carreras. Entonces yo era maestro por 14 años, ya no soy joven, um, pero el último año, año y mitad, empecé un, uh, no sé, un gran cambio de cambiar de educación a uh, seguros, aseguranzas. Entonces, Ahora estoy trabajando con una company, compañía de Sedgwick. Uh, soy ajustador, entonces quería hacer otra cosa y es, me, me encanta el trabajo y las destrezas que yo tenía que desarrollar por ser maestro en frente de 30 estudiantes. Uh, me ha servido mucho hablando con la gente. Um, no sé tan como larga necesita hacer esta pregunta. Algo breve, Toby, por favor, para déjame pensar y reflexionar. Um, so what Nick's saying is he he was a teacher for 14 years, so he's not a young buck as he used to be. Um, he's transitioned over to um, insurance sales. He's an adjuster for a new company. He wanted to make the change earlier. Um, he's been very happy being a teacher, but in the last year he wanted to change and being in front of 30 plus students and being able to practice Spanish and speaking to them, it was, a, it was an easier transition for him going into the insurance world since he'll be having a lot of Spanish speaking clients. Client. Fenomenal, Toby. Tu inglés es mejor que mío, yo creo. <laughs> uh, pues sí, esa es la idea básica. Entonces, no sé. Me estoy muy contento por haber tenido esta experiencia de ser maestro que... No sé, la, la capacidad que yo no tenía el primer año de hablar en frente de todo, todo el día, intentar de observar la, las reacciones de cada estudiante y entender su nivel y ir a su nivel, entonces, y intentar de subirla donde están. Si algunos están aquí, hay que empujarlo un poco más. Si ya está un poco malo, hay que empujarlo un poco más. Entonces, la capacidad de navegar esa situación aquí, esa situación aquí, pues me ha servido mucho. Entonces me encanta, me encantó de todas las escuelas donde yo trabajé. Entonces ahora es, es diferente. Yo, uno de mis uh, pues, colegas me pasó mi primera llamada, me pasó un papelito diciendo por mi primera llamada, no necesitas gritar. Entonces, yo estoy acostumbrado a usar mi voz de maestro en frente de todos de 30 estudiantes de middle school. Entonces, estoy acostumbrado de gritar. Pues, así. Uh, no, me, me gusta la carrera y la experiencia de ser maestro. Entonces, no sé, hemos hablado. Esto es grupo de... Hay una, unas semejanzas entre ser maestro y ser vendedor de cualquier cosa. Entonces, no sé si Toby puedes traducir un poco y después comparar su experiencia de ser vendedor de pues, equipaje médico, yo creo. 
So when he was a teacher, it was the biggest thing he had was trying to understand each level of Spanish that his students had. So for him, try to see the reaction. Some kids were here, some were there, and then try to elevate their Spanish to the next level. So he had to navigate which one was starting out, which one had a much higher understanding or communication skill. So it was for him, it was trying to figure out who was there, what did the kids need, and how he can get them there. Um, and uh, when he was transitioning, uh, he was just mentioning one of his uh, coworkers um, passed him a note when he was speaking Spanish saying, hey, you don't have to scream. You're getting, sounds like you're yelling at, at, at whomever you're speaking to. And he's just using his teacher voice. Like he has to yeah. be boisterous. There's 30 kids, there's middle schoolers. Yeah. He's trying to figure all that out. So it, it is true. Um, I've been, I'm Nick, I'm also guilty of that. When I speak Spanish between me and my we family. We might all be. We, the Spanish comes up, it gets louder. And people are like, are you mad? Like, no, we're just excited. I don't, my dad does it. I do it. So it's not abnormal that you do that. Thank you for recognizing yeah. that, Sherry. Yeah. I think, it, you know, it's just here in, here in, uh, whether you're in North Texas, Central Texas, but just being here, it's such a skill. I mean, Toby, we've talked about this, right? In our job, in our, in our line of work, the, the advantage of if you do happen to come upon the Spanish speaking tech or surgeon or anesthesiologist or whatever, red tech, it doesn't, nurse, it's just such a, I mean, you talk about that really just like, how you maybe have unlocked some things or, or sped up some things, or maybe just where it's helped you speaking well, Spanish. This will tie, tie in nicely with what Nick was finishing at the end. He saw a lot of similarities between being a teacher and being a salesman. Um, and to that, for us, being able to speak Spanish, cuando voy al Valle, cuando voy a Harlingen, cuando voy a McAllen, uh, partes del Oeste como Amarillo or Lubbock, Hay mucho, muchos de los doctores son hispanos, mexicanos, um, costarricenses, um, y me toca hablar mucho con los doctores y la gente, como las enfermeras, que sí entienden el español porque es su primer idioma, son como nosotros. Les tocó hablar español primero, pero aprendieron el inglés por estar tan cerca de la frontera. Así de que para nosotros era es como platicar con un amigo que nunca conocí. Es, es más fácil nos, eso de tener otra persona de habla hispana en el mismo trabajo como que tenemos un poco de lealtad y nos conocemos más rápido en vez de vernos, oh, ¿quién eres tú? No te tengo fe, ¿qué quieres, qué quieres de aquí? ¿Por qué estás aquí? Así de que para nosotros tener esa, esa semejanza de ser hispano nos ayuda mucho porque no hay muchos de nosotros. I'm, you know, I yeah. take notes. I, Toby I can just... Remember I, everything. I, I love Very it. impressive. I can, just, I can just zone out and listen. Get what you got? <laughs> You're lucky. You're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> no, he was saying when he makes those trips down to the Valle and Harlingen and whatnot, Laredo, all those towns down there, um, he's interacting with Spanish-speaking doctors, Mexico, yes. Costa Rica, um, and a, you know they their first language, their comfortable language is Spanish, right. and oh, so Toby shows up, and I mean you know. Not that you have to speak Spanish to make those connections, but when you do, yes. the you get to know each other rapidly. The the Rapido. familiarity. I mean, the word he said was lealtad, which is such a great word. Loyalty. I mean, it's just like that's it. Instantaneous. We're already friends. It's like you've talked to somebody you've already been friends with for a million years. I mean, you can't get that without this language connection. And in, in, it's just important to note. That, that some of the things I would say most of the things that Toby's teaching, right. Or, or therefore is a new technique, a new workflow, a disruption of what these surgeons or staff are used to doing. So trust and loyalty are key. And so, I mean, like, that's so awesome that it's like, that's a, that's such an amazing, you know, footnote to, to this whole thing is that, you're able to connect quickly and establish loyalty and trust, you know, right out the gate. My favorite thing about that, you know how when you hear in Spanish and then you, a word will pop, it's like, but Budweiser, you know, it, we, when you said Lubbock, there's no possible way you could say Lubbock with like an accent because it broke everything you're saying. You're just like, you know, the valley and then 
Lubbock. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. I got, I got a kick out of that. It's probably where this shirt came from was Lubbock. But uh, anyway, it's, no it's comments on that true. camisa. No, no commentary. Como sí, si dice... Quiero el mariachi. Es de mi parte de Guadalajara. Somos los, mariachi. los mariachis. Mariachi. Oh, uno. Mariachi. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh. Como se dice hidden, the hidden man, mariachi. Escondido, el hombre escondido. escondido. No La centro. audiencia tiene miedo, no quieren ver. I think you may have scared some of our, our young audience members there. Arriba, no, no. abajo, el centro, el arriba. No. Sí, es una, es una charra. Sí, sí. Uh, me encanta es, es camis, camiseta, camis, es uh, camis. silk. Meseda. Sí. Uh, es uh, suave, Spanish muy suave, suave. suave. Como, como tú. <laughs> Rico. <laughs> We're going off the rails, gentlemen. Let's let's, let's right. rein it in. We, it's my fault. Right. Refocus. Uh, okay, let's close this thing out. We, we I, I promise this is not going to be long. Just really, I, I thought it was such a cool opportunity to to maybe reach a new audience to speak in their in their tongue and. Uh, and, and my two friends here uh, are, are helping do that. So any final comments, anything you guys wanted to touch on, whether it's from, you know, what you're doing now, what you want to do, um, you know, the, uh, the great World Cup qualifying games that are going on. It's just such a, such a cool time, you know, right now. But anything at all you guys wanted to address before we close? Was dire algo corto? Um... Gracias por esta oportunidad, señor Jamil, por invitarme a participar en su podcast. Es mi primera. Um, oh. nah, es, me, me gusta el español. Recomiendo que cada persona aprenda un otro idioma por todas las puertas que pueden abrir, todos los amigos que pueden tener. Eso es una vida más colorida. Uh, en mi opinión, entonces estoy contento por tener esta destreza, la verdad. Y si, si tienen miedo de transferir querer, carreras de una cosa, no debes tenerlo siempre con, no sé, con ganas, con uh, esfuerzo. No sé, cualquier persona puede hacer cualquier cosa y no importa la edad. Me gustaría pensar así por lo menos. Pues, y ojalá que los, que México y los Estados Unidos pueden ir a Qatar. Ojalá. Gracias. De nada. Ni con, uh, con gusto. Sí. Con cariño. Y, y para mí, también estar aquí otra sí. vez en el podcast de Jay y un nuevo amigo, Nick, una persona que a mí me encanta ver personas que no hablan español como su primer idioma, el, tu español es magnífico, te sientes bien. Muy amable. Oh, no, te, te sientes agradable, no, no tienes miedo de decir algo malo, te corriges, así de que, como tú dices, de tener el esfuerzo de cambiar tu carrera, así lo tomas tú en aprender otro idioma. No tienes miedo, le pones, no le das miedo. ganas, um, y, y tienes, conoces más amigos, conoces más gente, puedes, como dices, puedes de... Um, a disfrutar de otras cosas que nunca conocías y es parte que, que me gusta hablar español me toca ir a Colombia y a ayudar a los niños me va, voy a ir otra vez en noviembre uh, en una misión de la espina dorsal así de que uh, como lo dijo Nick no, no tengas miedo de cambiar carreras o hacer algo diferente para poder tener un futuro mejor y mejor si puedes hablar otro idioma And that should be the title of the podcast. No tengo miedo. No tengas miedo. Don't be scared. Mm -hmm. I love that. Works for me. I like it. I approve. Well, guys, this was fun. I, I again, sometimes these ideas, they just, they just happen and you got to roll with it. I'm really glad you guys joined me on this adventure because it would have stalled out very quickly if I was trying to speak Spanish in, uh, in any way, shape or form. But, uh, It's wonderful to have you guys on, to be on this uh, new format. The, uh, the three of us, uh, Tres Amigos, and uh, hey, uh, have a, uh, 
Hasta buen uh, fin de semana, even though it's lunes. <laughs> <laughs> Never too late. <laughs> Never too early. It's already, it's already the weekend. When you wear this shirt, bro, the week. Me encanta. No weekdays. Una corta semana. No weekdays. Oh my gosh. Every uh, day is Friday with that shirt on. Every day. There it is. Todos días es, todos días es, uh, uh, jueves, no. Viernes. Viernes. Sí. Todos días es viernes in mi cabeza. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys for joining Los Sultans of Sales. This was fun with Tobias and Nicholas. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop the recording now. Tune in next week. <laughs>